What's up guys and girls, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be looking at 21 tips on how to ride safe in a city. So I've commuted for over two years in London on my road bike and these are a collection of tips from discussions from my experience riding on the busy roads in a city, specifically London. Now these are just my tips to try and help you be a little bit safer. It's not a manual to follow. And don't get me wrong, I'm here to promote cycling. So I don't want the safety aspect to put anyone off cycling. I actually wanna highlight these to give you a bit more confidence to actually get on the road and cycle more. Now I'm gonna talk about all these things so you can avoid moments like these. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, no, wait, maybe not. Ooh. Tickets, please! So point number one, the lifesaver. Now, in the motorbike world, this maneuver is called a lifesaver, and it's a simple look over your right shoulder. In our case, because we drive on the left-hand side. Obviously, if you ride on the right-hand side, then look over your left shoulder. Now, it's called a lifesaver. I mean, that's enough, right? Literally look over your shoulder and see what's going on behind you. You want to know what's behind you, especially if you're riding and you've got a junction coming up on your left, there's a chance a car might come past and turn left into you. So a quick look over your shoulder, you're going to see what's coming. Also, it helps when you're riding, just bend your arm. So if you're looking over your right shoulder, bend your right arm. It helps you stay straight on the road. Number two, don't blind spot cruise. Now, if you drive a car, you're going to know what a blind spot is. If you don't drive a car, it's basically the point if the car's here driving along if you ride just to behind the car and to the left the driver can't see you in their wing mirror and they can't look back to see you either and you do not want to be in that position because the driver cannot see you and you can't directly see the driver in their actions either so don't blind spot cruise number three is eye contact now this might sound silly but you can really tell someone's intentions when you see their face or look into their eyes if you see a driver coming towards you and you catch eyes with that driver, you know he's acknowledged you and there's there's something there once you know that acknowledgement has been made. You know that he's seen you and you know he's potentially not gonna crash into you, let's hope. So eye contact, look at pedestrians, look at car drivers, whoever it may be, see their intentions. Number four, take a spare inner tube, tire levers and a pump or look where your local bike shop is so you know on your route where you can stop and you can get your inner tube fixed obviously if you have the equipment with you you can just fix it at the side of the road because it is frustrating getting punctures also look for decent tires that are puncture proof or puncture resistant especially if you're commuting around town where there's glass and debris all over the road number five familiarize yourself with certain routes if like me you commute on the same route each day or a slight variation of that route then familiarize yourself you know where the dangers are you know where you may see accidents can potentially happen so you can anticipate those dangers early so think about that think about the road surfaces as well you know the smooth roads you know where the bumps are the lumps hole the potholes the manhole covers the drains all of those things should come into your mind when riding it's going to help you ride safer and it's also going to help you anticipate and spot the danger early number six and this is also a consequence of point number five number six is don't be complacent like we ride every day and also normally people crash on roads they actually know because you can kind of switch off you feel like you know what's going to happen right you feel like you know the roads. you feel like the route is this going to happen cars normally do this because i've ridden down this road a hundred times actually things can happen outside of your control at any point so don't be complacent make sure you're alert at all times and that brings me on to point number seven and that is focus i mean you need to focus, you're doing something that is dangerous, like appreciate the danger. If you've hit the deck at any sort of speed, I have, I crashed my motorbike, then you'll realize that, you know, hitting the deck at 10 mile an hour, 15 mile an hour, 20 mile an hour, it's gonna hurt, right? Especially when you've just got normal clothing on, you haven't got lots of protective gear. So stay focused on your route and just appreciate what's going on around you, appreciate the dangers that are there. Number eight, Wear the tightest clothing possible because you want to be aero. 
Number nine, wear padded shorts. Honestly, there's so many sore asses out there crying out for a bit of cushioning and it makes such a big difference. I didn't use padded shorts for like eight months and literally when I did, I thought, why didn't I do this before? I'm not saying you need to go and wear full Lycra. I'm literally just saying, get some padded shorts. You can get ones that you can wear underneath your actual clothing if you want to, if you don't want to wear Lycra. But the better the padded short, the more comfort you are gonna have. Point number 10 is light. Now, I don't care if you're lit up like your nan's Christmas tree, you need to have lights on your bike. You need to charge them frequently. You need to use them often to make sure you are seen. Number 11, protect that beautiful round shaped thing on the top of your neck, your head. Yes, wear a helmet, people. I don't care who you are, what you're doing, wear a helmet when you ride, because if you go down and hit your head, even at 10 mile hour on a curb, it's not gonna be good. Wear a helmet, keep your head safe. Point number 13 is your commute or your ride through the city needs to have this priority. Number one, get there safely. Number two, get there quickly. Not get there quickly and don't worry about safety. Honestly, that goes for most riding, to be honest, when you are on the road. Safety first, speed second. Number 15, the use of headphones. Now, I'm not saying don't use headphones, but what I'm saying is, don't blast out headphones in your ears so you completely lose that sense when you're on the road. I mean, you wanna be able to hear things that are going on. You wanna be able to hear sirens, cars accelerating, horns, whatever it may be, someone shouting at you, other cyclists. So don't have your headphones on full blast. You can listen to ABBA on full blast when you get to the office, but until then, keep the volume low. Number 16, do your best to help car drivers understand your intentions. So indicate early, make your position very precise. Don't hesitate, right? Make your decision, signal it, let everyone else know what you're doing nice and clear. That makes their life easier. And also you are decisive, so you know what you're doing. It's all clear for everyone involved. Number 17 is watch out for T-junctions. This is an important one because this is where a lot of accidents happen in my opinion and where I've seen dangers on the road. So if you're riding along and there is a car gonna pull out or you see a car sort of edging out into the cycle lane or onto the road, then just assume that they're gonna come out because the chances are they will and you can go directly into them and you're gonna hit that stationary car and it's gonna hurt. So watch out at T-junctions. The same goes for what I said earlier about looking over your shoulder. At a T-junction when you're going along, a car might pull in. So you've got cars pulling out and you've got cars pulling in. So just be aware around T-junctions. I think I should say T-junctions again. T-junctions. <laughs> Number 18, don't hug the curb. Now there are various reasons for this. Number one, Hugging the curb is where all the dirt sort of ends up in the road. You've got drain covers as well, drains that are slippery, you've got leaves, you've got all the muck, you're gonna get covered in filth. And number two, if you're tight to the curb, what's gonna happen is cars think they can go past you nice and tight. So you're gonna leave a bit of a gap for them, then they're gonna hesitate, can I go past, shall I not go past? If you're slightly out, I'm not saying be out right in the middle of the road, I'm just saying be out enough so that you're not in the sort of drainage area, you're not in the gutter, and then also when you're out, cars are gonna have to make a conscious decision to overtake you. So that's what you want. Think about your positioning, it's super, super important. Number 19, car doors opening. Now this is also a common one, especially in London, you've got Ubers, taxis, people pulling up, delivery drivers, whoever it may be. So watch out for someone just pulling over to the left, right? If someone's pulled over to the left and you go to go around them, chances are that door might swing open. So anticipate that danger again. So be careful of those car doors. No one wants to go boom into a car door in the middle of central London. Number 20, and often one that's overlooked is be considerate to other cyclists as well. And it's quite a common thing, like the same goes with motorbikes, is motorbikes often hit other motorbikes because you go out to pull around traffic because you think you're the only motorbike, right? When actually there's another bike already filtering. The same goes for cycling. Like you might think you're the only cyclist there because you're going 20 mile an hour and there won't be someone overtaking you or whatever, but there actually could be. The same goes in the cycle lanes. Like think what's going on behind you. What are other cyclists gonna be doing? So be considerate to them and signal to them, let them know what you're doing and don't assume that you're the one going quickest, you're the one in front or that there won't be another cyclist ready to pull out in front of you or a cyclist you could potentially hit. 
And that brings me on to my next point, number 21, and that is undertaking. So when you're overtaking another cyclist on your bike, overtake them on the right hand side in the same way you would do in a car. You don't want to undertake someone on the left because that is going to surprise them. And also people are more likely to drift over to the left. It's just natural because we drive on the left. Obviously, if you drive on the right hand side, then this is all reversed. So yeah, don't undertake on the left hand side, overtake other cyclists on the right hand side. So there you go, guys and girls. They are my 21 tips to help you ride safer in a city on busy roads. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found something useful. I hope one of these tips, even one, helps you become a better rider then that's perfect, that's my, my job done. That's all I can want for you watching this video. So thanks again for watching guys and girls. Self love, safe riding, I'll see you in the next video.